Uh, I want to share out of Mark chapter 9 and verse 1 <laughs> for years. I had um, um, questions about what it represented and what was going on. And so it's Mark 9 <clears throat> and verse 1. And he said unto them, this is Jesus speaking, he said unto them, Verily I say unto you that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. So um, uh, we've got uh, Jesus and he took Peter, James, and John up with him. <clears throat> and, uh, and, but he's speaking to a crowd at this point, but right after this, and this is where you get just the very next verse, starts talking about what happened six days later. So Jesus has said, there's some right here that are going to see this, the kingdom come in power. <clears throat> and, um, um, and then six days later, he takes them up into the Mount of Transfiguration. And, and that's just verse 2, beginning with verse 2. And uh, verse 2 says, um, And after six days Jesus taketh with him Peter, James, and John, and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart themselves, and he was transfigured before them, and his raiment became shiny, <clears throat> exceedingly white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. Okay, and so um, this is a, an experience. This is <clears throat> something that's happening to them, and it's directly related because it's in the same chapter. This is the beginning in the second verse, and the first verse was, there's some standing here. And I always thought it was probably relating to somebody, you know, uh, like of the disciples, the twelve, maybe somebody that would live longer than everybody else and they would see the kingdom come or something like that. But the more I've studied this, the more I've realized that this transfiguration is exactly what the Lord planned to help them to understand this. Um, and Peter writes about it. Peter gives us his experience and what he got out of it. And that's in uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, starting with verse 16. And, um, and, he, and Peter says that at that, that place, at that Mount of Transfiguration, God made known something to him. So what was that? Well, it was the power and coming of the Lord. Um, but it's not in the manner that we think. So let's look at uh, 2 Peter 1, 16, starting with verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Um, <clears throat> and uh, for he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. So Jesus said that you, you know, um, that there some some standing here see the, the power and the kingdom coming, the, the kingdom coming in power. And so that's what Peter's referring to here. He uses almost those exact words, and he's talking about um, what he got out of it, not just the event, not just the event, but the spiritual reality of it. So um, Jesus only took three of his disciples up there, and they saw and they heard what all transpired that day. And so, uh, in, I'm going to give you the uh, version of this in Matthew now, Matthew 17, because it adds a few things. Matthew 17, verse 1 and 2. Um, and after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, and his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And verse 4 says, Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elijah. While he yet spoke, while he yet spoke, behold, 
A bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice came out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. So the first thing to notice is, that Jesus's face did shine, and it makes uh, that an important an, an important point. Um, so, le so uh, keep your place there in Matthew. But uh, in fact, I'll just read you a couple of scriptures. This is Second Corinthians three eighteen. Most of you know this one. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now he's talking about the, the glorious majesty and the, and the coming of the Lord in power and all of that. Peter's talking about it and Jesus talked about it uh, at the beginning of uh, the, the first verse of Mark 9. Um, so now Paul is talking about it. And then also in four, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 6, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. These things just keep referring to glory and they keep referring to uh, this, this thing that, that uh, was supposed to happen. And it, Peter's saying, well, it did happen to us. Um, so... Remember that when Peter was there, he started speaking up and he said, you know, it is good that we should be here. And very shortly, we're going to find that it was not good that they were there. <clears throat> um, in verse 5, when Peter was talking, he was saying, you know, it's good that we were here. And then while he is speaking, the scripture says, while he is speaking, God overshadowed his conversation. In other words, God cut him off. God said, hold up there, Skippy. We're not going to talk like that. Um, and he does that by means of a bright cloud. Okay, so we talk about Jesus coming in the clouds. So let's keep going here. Um, and God spoke and he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased and hear ye him. God, uh, Peter's got his emphasis going, right? He's making, you know, hey, we can do this and, and do that. And it's good that we're here. And God cuts him off. And uh, all of a sudden, Peter's emphasis is forgotten. And God's emphasis concerning his son is in the forefront. And what happens? They fall on their faces then. They fall on their faces. How many of us have heard God's heart, have heard that voice of his heart, and truly been hit so hard that we fall on our face. Sorry, for, but, but it, this, this stuff is real. This is real, and this is real life, and this is really where we should be. And, and um, anyway, so um, in verse 7 and 8, And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. So they've come to this place now where in this experience, they're seeing Jesus only. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to just read a little bit here because <laughs> as usual, I feel like I'm going to run over. So here's the question. What does this have to do with seeing the kingdom come in power? It has nothing to do with him coming in the air, but Christ being seen as the only life and coming in the power of the Father revealing his Son. It would come by all that is in us being overshadowed and Christ becoming the only one seen. That's better than being in an experience where a, sh a cloud came over and overshadowed us and, you know, that's much better. And, uh, and it's a picture of what? It's a picture of Christ in us and God overshadowing us by the Father exalting 
his son. Okay? It's a picture. And it's a picture of what else? It's a picture of how the Father wants to see us, but not us. Christ glorified in us, not just with us, you know, Christ glorified. We were there, not just above us, He's glorified, but Him only, Him only saying. So, um, let's see. I'm not sure how much. Oh, okay. Ephesians, I'm going to read Ephesians 1, um, starting with verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? See, he's talking about the, the, the power of his coming and, and of seeing him. To us, word who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, Power is used twice there. There's a mighty power that's supposed to be at work in us, um, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, which is God exalting his Son. Now, there, this is connected with us, okay? Um, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. The church, not to the church building or the church people, to the church, which is his body. It's, we are the church, which is his body. Which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. It's the fullness of him. And Ephesians 2, 6 says, And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So what Peter saw in the light of that moment was everything not just overshadowed, but in, I'll say it like this, but going down into death. Now I'll explain that in just a minute. And so when Christ is seen, then if everything has gone down in death, in other words, the cloud representing everything is now gone, now you only see Jesus. Okay? But you see Jesus, because remember this says, this is talking all about the exaltation of Christ. This is what it's saying. And Peter says, and we saw this, and the glory and the power in which God exalted his son. So if the cloud represents going into death so that we're not seen, then Jesus seen only means that's him as the resurrection. He's the one. Where are we? We're in him now. We're not with him anymore. We're in him. The Ephesians, I just read it. We were raised up made to sit together in heavenly places in, in Him. We are the church which is His body. All of these things are, are screaming uh, a greater reality, greater reality, greater than, than an event on a mountain 2,000 years ago, greater than going to a church building and experiencing Him but rather being found in him, not having, Paul said, not having mine own righteousness, but that which is of him, that which is him. So uh, this is uh, 2 Peter 1.16, again, this part. For we have not followed cunning device, uh, devised fables when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. And this, you see what this is saying? This is, we're making known to you the power and the coming of the Lord because we were witnesses of it. Well, Jesus didn't come back in the air for them. This was a, a preview from the Father saying, this is the exaltation that I'm going to give Jesus. This is the majesty that I'm going to give Jesus. I'm going to put everything into death. I'm going to overshadow it. And then I'm going to put you in him. And then I'm going to exalt him above everything. Let's see. So let me read uh, verse 18 and 19 of that. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard 
when we were with him in the Holy Mount, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well to take heed as unto a light, a light that shineth in a dark place. Remember all the scriptures that we read about his face glowing and the light and being changed into that same image. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Oh God, right now, if we haven't really seen it like we need to, then that light needs to shine in our dark place. Until what? Until the day dawn. Let that light keep shining, breaking through all of our dark places, because that's what it's into a dark place, into our dark places. Until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart. Every, Peter knew this. Everyone didn't experience what Peter, James, and John experienced. So you're just out of luck unless there's the Word of God, which is what he's saying here. Everyone can have this experience in the Word. <laughs> we all, nobody's left out. See, when he first said this thing, the thing we started with was Mark 9, 1. There, is, there are some standing here. Well, not everybody experienced it there. But Peter brings it back to life. And he says in his letter, writing out to everyone, but you can be there. You can be there. You can, you can have this light shine. You can see the exaltation of the Father in the manner that he did it. And I wrote, the Word has a light. It can shine this truth into your dark places. And then my last verse is Revelation twenty two sixteen, And this is Jesus. I am the bright and the morning star. Oh, God. Wow. You know, not just words. You know, if, if, the word, if the Word doesn't overshadow us, if the Word doesn't excite us, if the Word doesn't... And, you know, I walked in and I heard Sharon praying and saying, you know, what a privilege to hear His heart. Amen! <laughs> what a privilege that we can hear His heart and, and hear the Spirit of God breathe eternal reality to us. I, you know, I don't, I don't know why in these sessions I always get all teared up. I don't do that when I preach. But I just, you know, maybe it's in y'all's presence. We're together. We're all seeking the Lord. We all have a heart for Him. We want Him. We want Him more than we want us. And, and you move me because your hearts are that way. And I hope somehow I by the Spirit of God can move you because my heart is with you in that. So let's just pray. Lord, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for Peter. Thank you for him writing to us, not an experience that he had, but later the day dawned and the day star arose in his heart. And he realized what that was all about. It wasn't the moment. It wasn't the experience. It was representative of the great coming of the Lord in, in us. And we thank you, Father. We thank you. You're precious. We thank you that your Son is precious to you. We thank you for the dove, the Holy Spirit, who on his wings we are blessed with the eternal word. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys so much. I do. I love you. Thank you a lot. More than I can say. <laughs>